Hello YouTube, welcome to the next video on the Land Rover Discovery V8 engine rebuild. In this video, the time lapse makes me look like I don't know what I'm doing honing the bores. And I definitely don't know what I'm doing <laughs> trying to resurface the, uh, the cylinder block decks. Let's get into it. So there was some damage on the deck. I've been sanding that with a thick steel plate and measuring uh, the clearances with um, feeler gauges on a straight edge. And uh, that I kind of ran out and I didn't, I wasn't happy with the straight edge. So I bought a better one and uh, I haven't continued the job yet, but I'm fairly happy with it. I've checked it with the new straight edge now, uh, 120 pounds worth of 600 mil straight edge. And it's looking pretty good actually. There's a little bit more work to do, but for now I want to honing because I ran out of, yeah doing that for now so i've done this ball i'm pretty happy with it this one i've done maybe two thirds of the job i'm going to carry on with it i think uh, maybe it's time for a bore honing time lapse now it looks like i'm holding the um in this video it looks like i'm holding the drill still and rotating in the board which is obviously incorrect i'm not doing that it's the frame rate of the time lapse that's captured me in the same position every time i'm going up and down trying to create a 45 to 60 degree hone there we go that's all done then i'm pleased i got through it all so there's uh can you see there's a cross hatch? There we go. You can see behind there's evidence of where the piston stopped. You can't feel anything. They're actually very good, these bores, for uh, for the mileage the engine was on. So that's the honing done. I've got my straight edge now, so I can check, and I'll do that next. Check these uh, these decks that I've done uh, with the sanding and the block. Uh, see how uh, good they are. I think they're okay, but the straight edge I had before wasn't quite long enough to go across the block, so I'll give that a go next. And I might do a little more sanding. There's not much left to do now. There's a bit of damage I wanted to get rid of. There we go. You can see it there behind the liner and on the aluminium face. It's very little left. But uh, I could continue to take the surface down another thou or two and get to that and get that flat. What I am pleased about though is these... Uh, I don't know if you can see it. It's very hard to see. But the liners now are flush at the top. There's shiny aluminium and there's shiny steel. So that one, that one, that one, yeah, on this side, all four of them have now got the same height as uh, the, the liner and the deck. Uh, and they're all hitting tightly against the shelf on the bottom, so these liners ought to be constrained. And once again, there's been no evidence of any slippage. So these ones, there's no damage on this face now, I've got rid of all the damage on this face, but that liner is flush, that one is flush, that one is flush. Uh, actually, that one's flush too. Where is it? I thought there was one of these. Oh no, it's that one, it's that one. Yeah, where the sandpaper has not yet cleaned the tiny top edge of the steel. So I've got to get this deck face down another thou or two to get to that liner. And then all, all of it will be flush. And it's very pernickety. A friend of mine pointed out today, it's very pernickety, but it's free. It's just my time. So uh, I'm happy to spend the time sanding that another couple of hours or whatever it takes to get those uh, as good as I can. Not top hats, not pinned, but otherwise as good as I can. So let that continue. So this is the straight edge bought 120 pounds. But actually that's less than half the price of decking these two faces. And that's before you've skimmed the uh, the cylinder head. So there it is, 600 mil precision straight edge. It doesn't actually come with a spec, but it does say suitable for testing distortion on cylinder heads and engine blocks. So apparently it's talking the talk. Everything like it would do, what was it, 2,000 over 600 mil? Maybe it was... Bit more, it was three thousand, like. So I mean, it ought to be good. Uh, it was enough money. <laughs> and the next, the next most expensive was eight hundred. In this sort of section, I wanted it nice and big like that, so I could comfortably just lay it flat on the side, so I didn't have to hold it. Because what you find with a steel ruler is you're holding it, and in doing so, you're you're introducing an error. You can bend it. So that can just sit on the deck like that now, nice and easy. And I can use the smallest feeler gauge I have, which is 0.05 millimetres, or um, two thou, I believe. That's the one there. Let me fold these others away. There we go. So you can use a 0.05 millimetre feeler gauge and check. So if this deck face was hogging, uh, it would be tight here and then it would be sloppy at the ends. I get the feeler gauge under the far end. Uh, so it's not hogging. If it was sagging, then it would be uh, loose here in the middle. 
it would be a, a bowl shape, you know. It's not doing that either. So, yeah, you can check this in uh, along there, along there, along there. Then you do the diagonals along there and along there for checking for, uh, you know, Pringle shapes or a saddle or whatever it might be. And then it's not uh, anywhere near as likely to be out in this orientation, but you can also check that orientation there and all the way along. Now, the piece of steel I was using to sand this was easily wider than that width there and it's nice and flat so I'm assuming there'll be no distortion that way of course I'll measure it but what I wasn't able to check is the distortion along its length like this um, because that is purely down to how much time I spend, I spend sanding here compared to here uh, or in the middle you know for a hogging or sagging situation so that's why I wanted this straight edge to double check that and I've done a lot of um, angles and checking and blah 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 I think I found that we've got a slight low spot there in that plane there so up here's good 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 and I think uh, maybe it's the other head maybe it's the other, the other bank yeah it might be the other bank so anyway that confirms I can just keep sounding as I was whatever I was doing wasn't taking it out of spec so I'm going to keep going for a long bloody time. <laughs> well, I'm very sad to report that despite my best efforts, sanding the, uh, the deck faces on the block and the cylinder heads uh, didn't work. We bought that lovely 120 pound straight edge and for hours it was staying straight. But in, in the end, the, um, the material was, uh, the, the surface of those heads was beginning to uh, come out of, out of flat specification basically. So around the cylinder bolts, the 10 cylinder bolts there's quite a, an expanse of aluminium face and then sort of between the bores there's very much less and the sandpaper was taking more off despite having a flat piece of steel doing the job it was taking more off uh, some areas than others and it was doing the same thing on the block and the head so the high points would match on the block and the heads which mean the low points would, would really be opening up quite a gap and the, and the gasket wasn't going to work so it was a very depressing day but i've come to the realization that they need skimming and I know the limitations of sanding those faces now. I've learned the hard way. You can get away with it. You can do a little bit. You can certainly clean the face, but you can't take off the sort of uh, whatever it was I was trying to take off. 0.1 of a mil, maybe 0.2. Um, if you're sanding those faces, they will come out of flatness. It's a fact. Uh, despite what you do, even if you have a table with sandpaper glued to it, you can't do it. Um, you can't keep it flat. Uh, so accepting that it will come out of flatness if you're removing a tiny bit of material that's okay you can get away with it but this was too much so it's at the machine shop now you can see here the engine stand is got nothing on it anymore the block and both of the heads are gone and i'm waiting it's gonna be a couple of weeks so in the meantime i've been fixing up some of the parts that are going to go back on that so i've got to clean the pistons and rods uh covers uh rocker covers little things i can get there's plenty i can do to get on with it and get ready for that when it comes back so i can just assemble the engine so that's all for this video. Another depressing end, really. Uh, a lot of work wasted, a lot of time wasted. But uh, the engine off now with the professionals for a, a skim, uh, the block and the heads. In the next video, I will prepare all the uh, other parts of the engine ready for assembly while those uh, head and blocks, are, the block and heads are away. Um, and yeah, that's all for now. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you're enjoying these videos, and uh, see you again soon.